Hi, I'm Asher, and welcome to Edible Education with Ocean View School District. Today, we're with Romeo Coleman at Coleman Family Farms in Ventura to talk about kale. And oh boy, do I love kale. Ocean View School District serves these fresh, locally sourced foods to students every day. Be sure to check them out in your school's cafeteria to get a taste. I was growing up as a teenager and trying to figure out what you're doing, you know, so around 18, I was going to Santa Barbara City College and I saw that my dad was able to be a farmer and raise a family and we did okay. So I decided to take that avenue and be the farmer. We farm two different properties, one in Carpinteria, which is six acres, that's the family farm. And then this farm here on the 33, it's 10 acres. And we've been here around 12 years farming it. So it may not be difficult for me to understand, but <laughs> Why, why should people care about kale so much? Um, because it's a good vegetable to eat. I agree. Uh, many different uses, and it has lots of vitamins. When does kale grow here? You can grow it any, any time of year in California, in Southern California, but the best time is the early fall. With the cooler nights, the kale actually gets kind of like a sweeter flavor. Whereas if you're growing in the middle of the summer, it wouldn't have that sweet flavor because it doesn't cool off enough. Doing the farmers markets has allowed us to talk to a lot of people, a lot of customers, and that's brought different different vegetables into our life and different products. Abundance throughout the season by doing row succession or planting succession. So that with our kale, for instance, we we're planting kale every two weeks for around four months. And that gives you a continual harvest of product. So if you just put everything in one field, plant the whole thing at once, you'd harvest the whole thing at once. So we do timing to break that up and make it so that there's a longer season with it. By the time we get to this spot right here, the Ocean View School District will probably be getting this fresh and kill right there. That looks so baby right now, but in about two months, it'll be about this big, ready for harvest, just like the stuff Asher was eating earlier. The future of our farm depends on water to farm. So as long as we have water to grow our crops, then we can keep farming. And I see it into the future for a long time because everyone needs to eat. Well, that was super fun and really informative. Now, we're gonna go see Alex Montoya and we're gonna have a child-friendly, really easy, and definitely not hard recipe that is not dangerous in the slightest way. Now buckle up. <laughs> Today, we're with Alex Montoya, executive chef at Water's Edge Restaurant. What you gonna make for us? So today we're gonna do this like maple Italian glazed cornichon over a locally farmed kale and locally farmed Easter radishes. And then we're gonna hit it with a little bit of this balsamic reduction. So it's gonna be this fun kind of comfort family dish, but elevated with a local twist. So it's gonna be nice. I hope you enjoy, I hope you're ready. I will, sounds delicious. So we need to marinate these Cornish hens here that we have. And so these are one pound each. So that's where, this is about a tablespoon to a half a tablespoon of each product here. That's gonna be perfect to stretch for that marinade. All right, so what are these? So that you have here is cracked peppercorn. Cracked peppercorn, so they're just. Yeah, so that's Italian oregano. This is minced garlic. So now what you're adding is actually in, uh, garlic infused oil that we do in house. That's a, a Canadian maple syrup. And uh, we have a fire behind this, so I'm gonna be right back. This is wahio powder, which is, uh, wahio is a type of pepper that once you dry it out, grind it down, this is what you can get here. It's a little in-between spicy flavor um, that I think is in-between cayenne and paprika that I like to use. This right there is, uh, is dried thyme. It's kosher salt. That is balsamic, so that's going to give it a little bit of a tang. So that there is Dijon mustard. It is. Why don't you go ahead and uh, let me grab a spoon real quick. Give me one moment, please. I'm going to get rid of that fire. Oil will start a fire. Make sure all that's well mixed, and then you're going to pour it over the Cornish hens here, and then you're gonna massage it in there, make sure you get all up in the crevices, up under the arms. We're gonna sear these, kind of like these little scored medallions, if you would, to get this nice color on them before adding them into the kale that we're gonna kind of create this base for the Cornish hen to um, sit on. Now I'm gonna have you grab the Cornish hen, you can open this oven here, and you're gonna throw that in for about 20 minutes. Uh, bottom shelf will be just fine. 
actually gonna bring out the natural sugar that's inside the radishes. It's probably gonna be just about maybe a minute and a half to two minutes on each side. That's it, we're gonna toss them back in here so we can finish sauteing them with what we're gonna do, that kale uh, uh, base for the whole entire dish. What is flambe? So flambe is when you create uh, a flame from, uh, it's, it's French, don't quote me on that, but it sounds French, it's pretty French, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> um, and so it's uh, creating a, a flambe or flame from the saute pan, usually by deglazing your, di your pan. Uh, most of the time people deglaze with wine, some people use rum, any liqueur, alcohol, that kind of gives it that, that um, the ignition content that it needs for the fire to go. Um, you can flambe by also oil, but that's something that's more like a grease fire that we've kind of been through. I'll make sure I got my wine. Now we're gonna add the kale. Cherry wine, it's, it comes out a little sweeter as opposed to other wines, and so that's personally, I like to not taste the alcohol, personally. I'm not a huge fan of it. I like the flavor of them more. So. And then once that flame's gone, that's how you know the alcohol's been cooked off. So I'm gonna hit you with some alcohol now. Yep. All right. That's quite the process. Not too bad though, honestly. It's something you can easily prep. You saw how fast it was for it to come together. So if your prep is key and you can do this for large parties, things like that, it's something that you can easily work before so you can actually sit down and enjoy with your group. I'm ready to eat. I'm ready to eat. All right, we'll start.